In 2017, I received offers from six top tech companies, Google, Facebook, Snapchat, Airbnb, Stripe, and Uber. I had about three years of work experience at this point, and what was surprising to me was the variance in the offers I received and how much I was able to negotiate, more than half a million dollars in one instance. In this video, I'll share my exact numbers, how they changed, and what you can apply to your own job search. After two and a half years at Pinterest, I decided to start looking for other opportunities. I spent a few months doing interview prep, and then I made a very methodical plan for job searching. My approach was to condense the stress of job hunting into as short a time as possible, which has two big benefits. First, there's a huge overlap in the types of questions that these big tech companies ask. So by doing the preparation for the Snapchat interview, for example, you've already done more than 80% of the interview preparation for Google. The second benefit is that I was able to collect offers at roughly the same time, which is critical for leverage. I had one really stressful week where I had back-to-back-to-back on-site interviews, but this allowed me to collect data at the same time and compare the numbers, so it's clearly the best way to do a job search. I won't cover the planning or preparation for all my job interviews, but I'll leave a really helpful resource for that in the description. All in all, I received six offers out of eight final round on-site interviews. I'll share the offers I received from lowest to highest total compensation. The first was Google, and I thought the interview went fairly well, but I was disappointed to learn that they actually put me in as a L3 entry-level engineer. So the numbers from Google were $140,000 salary, $300,000 in equity over four years, and a $20,000 signing bonus. Even at the top end of the entry-level engineer compensation, which is apparently what I had received, it still was not competitive with the other offers, which goes to show that the level you come in at in big tech companies is a huge determinant to how much you'll end up getting paid. Next was Airbnb, and overall the interview went well. I remember I did really well on the culture and behavioral interview, but there was one algorithm problem, like DSA problem, that I didn't finish in time. And so I stalked the interviewer, I found them on LinkedIn, and I sent them a message saying, hey, here's my completed solution five minutes after the interview ended, which I don't recommend, but I still got an offer. I got a mid-level offer, and the numbers were $163,500 salary, $420,000 in equity over four years, and a $10,000 signing bonus. Next was Uber, where I was very borderline. I was actually rejected by the first team I had applied into, but they found a better fit on an adjacent team. And the offer was fairly competitive, $144,000 salary and a $558,000 equity package, no signing bonus. But at this point, I had effectively committed to Facebook, and I had also heard questionable things about Uber's culture, because this was a few months after the Susan Fowler harassment scandal. Next was Stripe, which I was really excited by because I would have been one of the company's first full-time mobile developers, and their whole interview process was based off of pair programming, which I loved way more, I preferred way more compared to leak code style of problems. Their offer ended up being $155,000 salary, $615,000 in equity over four years, and a $30,000 signing bonus. The two most compelling offers I received were Facebook and Snapchat, so I'll share the back and forth I had with them. I had a lot of power in negotiation for a few key reasons. First, I wasn't desperate to join any one company. I had the ability to walk away, and that ability to say no is what gives you power. The Facebook offer increased $300,000, and the Snapchat offer increased $510,000, which honestly blew my mind. The second reason is that I knew that Facebook and Snapchat had a talent war going on, especially for mobile engineers, and more so for Android engineers, which is what I had been doing professionally at that point for a couple years. And finally, I was very clear about what parts of the offer I cared more about. I was a very stingy 25 year old, and so any base salary would have comfortably covered my living expenses, travel, and more. I think a lot of younger engineers are in a similar position as what I was in, and so you can adopt and steal this playbook in your own negotiation. So I told the recruiter and the hiring manager that I am very happy to trade off salary in order to get a lot more of some other offer component, in particular equity or signing bonus. I did well in the Facebook interview and I received a senior level offer, which unlocked a much higher pay band. So the initial offer I received from Facebook was $170,000 base salary, $315,000 in equity over four years, and a $30,000 signing bonus. The Snapchat recruiter was hesitant to give me a formal offer until I revealed to them other numbers I had received or at least other companies I had gotten offers at. So eventually I did end up revealing that I had gotten a 
senior level offer from Facebook. And so their initial offer was $160,000 salary, 600K in equity, and a $10,000 signing bonus. This offer was clearly better than Facebook, especially in the equity component. So now I went back to the Facebook recruiter and I said, hey, I really care about joining Facebook. I think there's a ton of impact I could have. Is there anything that could be done about this disparity? And within a few days, Facebook almost doubled their equity package from 315K to 600K in equity over four years. Now I went back to Snapchat and within a few days, they massively increased their offer. The salary went from 160K to 180K. The signing bonus went from 10K to 100K, literally a 10X increase. And the equity package went from 600K to a million dollars. So that is back weighted. It was 10, 20, 30, 40 vesting as opposed to 25% each year. But still, it broke my brain that about an hour worth of email and phone call could lead to life-changing swings in compensation. I focused a lot on the numbers in this video, but there's a lot more that goes into a job than just compensation. There are intangible things like people, culture, technology that are hugely important. Even though Snapchat had objectively a higher comp package, I really valued the hacker culture at Facebook and the ability to stay in the Bay Area. So I ended up picking Facebook where I stayed for four and a half years and I got promoted to staff engineer. I made a detailed video about that whole experience and I'll leave that in the description or somewhere over here. Here were the full compensation packages from every company I received an offer from broken down into salary, equity, signing bonus, and annual bonus. And what's interesting is if we highlight now which of these numbers changed through the process of negotiation. And what you can see is almost half the numbers went up. And that shows that this is not a unique thing. Many companies and many people negotiate. And if you don't play that game, you are missing out on an enormous pot of gold. And here are the total compensation numbers for year one if I had joined any of these companies. And you can see it ranges from 256,000 at Google all the way up to $548,000 at Snapchat. And these numbers did go up significantly through negotiation. Throughout this whole experience, I learned a huge amount about the calculus that goes on within companies to decide if and when they wanna offer more money to a candidate. I packaged up the principles and tactics that I've learned along with from talking to hundreds of engineers in Taro into a three hour course. I'll leave a link for that in the description. In my experience, you have one or maybe maximum two rounds of back and forth with a company with negotiation. So you need to be deliberate about your approach, which is what I cover in this course, the insider's guide to negotiating your compensation. Just for fun, let's take a look back at which company would have been the best financial decision because now we have almost eight years of data to see how each company performed. And actually every company I received an offer from has been doing really well in the market, but it's clear the breakout success would have been Stripe. At the time of the offer 2017, they had a 9 billion valuation. And if we assume an 80 billion valuation today, which is I think reasonable, that would have led to a 9X increase in equity. That means my equity package would have been worth five and a half million dollars, which is a huge, huge sum of money. Stories are nice, but my number one goal is to equip you with career success. So I wanna end this video with three actionable takeaways from my story that you can directly apply. Number one, by planning ahead, you can reliably create leverage. The key to having power in negotiations is to have multiple offers arriving at the same time. And arriving at the same time is critical, which means that you need to be proactive about scheduling interviews and coordinating across companies. You should also understand the competitive dynamics of your industry and which companies are in a talent war. So in my case, it was Snapchat and Facebook. Today, it might be Google and OpenAI, but you should do the research in your industry to figure out which two companies are really competitive. And that is how you create outlier outcomes. The second takeaway is that tech employees are uniquely positioned to negotiate. And there are two reasons for this. First, tech jobs and software engineering jobs in particular are high leverage, which means that there's a huge gap between an average average engineer and a top engineer, which means that companies are willing to pay top dollar for the potential of closing a candidate who might be one of the top 1% engineers. The second reason why we're able to uniquely negotiate in tech is because our offers have multiple components, which gives you a playground on which you can negotiate. You have the ability to create win-win scenarios based on the different utility functions of each offer component. So for example, for me, I was very happy to not negotiate at all on the base salary in order to get way more equity, which is actually aligned with what the company also wants. And finally, takeaway number three is that your value in the market is what someone is willing to pay you. 
I was the same exact person, the same candidate, and yet one company judged me as a junior engineer and the other company judged me as a senior engineer. On one hand, it's kind of demoralizing how imperfect tech interviews are, but on the other hand, it's also empowering that you are in control of your destiny. Don't let a label by a company or a manager dictate how you feel. Go out and collect a bunch of data, figure out where you can have a lot of value and where you can learn the most. And that is how you find career success. My journey with negotiation was pretty dramatic, as you can tell, but I wanna hear from each of you. So let me know in the comments if you have negotiated before, how did it work out for you, and what advice would you share for others? Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.